peace with us tonight. Yeah. We have long suffering Pastor Emeritus Jackson. We have journalist Lady Jackson. We have some goodness. I read the Bible. We have some goodness from Sister Bailey. We have a little faith from Lady Jackson. We have a little weakness from the Evangelist Johnson. Number nine, we had temperance. that he has you to do. You make up in your mind, 
And what you're going to do when you're going to stop, when you're going to start, and how long you're going to do. Right. God, I serve, it's going to work like that. All right. Preach it, sir. It doesn't work just like that. So then, a good Bible verse that I have is a voice. It says, what good is it to mouth the words, Lord, Lord, if you don't live by my teachings, what matters is that you come to me, hear my words, and actually live by them. If you're going to talk, talk about Jesus, you ought to live the life that you talk about. For the seventh verse in the King James says, Whosoever come to me and hear my sayings and do them and do with them, I will show you, I will show you to whom he is like. Yeah. For the verse says, He is like a man which built a house yeah. and built and dig it deep yeah. and laid the foundation on a rock. Mm. And when the flood arose, the stream beat yes. vehemently. Upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Yes. If you do that, you will be like a man who wanted to build a sturdy house, is what the scripture said. He dug down deep and anchored his foundation to the solid rock. Yes. During a violent storm, the flood waters slammed against the house, but they couldn't shake it because of solid craftsmanship. Yes. It was built upon a rock. Who is our rock? Jesus. Jesus. I'm glad you were listening. Yes. Jesus is our rock. Right, this rock is Jesus. He is the one. Right. I don't care who you're standing next to, who you holding on to. They're not your rock, but Jesus is. Right. I don't care who you think you get power from. You may think, oh, Mr. Draper, he gives me a little power to, 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 to uh, he encourages me, but I'm not your rock. Jesus is your rock. Yeah. The church was built. Peter said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So then we've got to learn how to know what our rock is and who our rock is. Our rock is Jesus. So then the following verse, I'm almost finished. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth. Against which the stream did not beat vehemently, and immediately it failed. And the ruin of that house was great. Mm -hmm. Are you going to pray with me? Yeah. You will be able to be the safe house. Yeah. The safe house. I'm reminded of a movie. The safe house. It was a movie, a young CIA agent is tasked with looking after a fugitive in a safe house. You may have seen this movie. Ryan Reynolds is a CIA rookie who is managing, if you will, a safe house in Cape Town, South Africa. When Denzel Washington, the CIA's most wanted rogue of Asia, is captured and taken to the safe house. During Frost interrogation, the safe house is overtaken. By mercenaries who want Frost. Uh -huh. Western and Frost escape and must stay out of the gunman's sight until they can get to another safe house. Right. You see, the devil wants to sift us uh -huh. just like wheat. Mm -hmm. But you got to learn how to let the blood hide you. Yeah. I believe it's, uh, I forget his name, but he sings a song, Hide Me. Uh -huh. Uh, can't think of his name, but he sings, he sings a song, Hide Me, Hide Me from the Enemy. Yes. Hide Me, Lord, Hide Me. Hide Me. Because we've got to learn how to stay up under the covering of the blood. Now, those only make sure, as we get into the scripture. We're going to back up. Weston and Frost escape and must stay out of the government's sight. Yes. They cannot get to a, another safe house. Now, what the, the mouth generally comes and speaks, generally agrees with what is most in the heart. Uh -huh. It's not what goes in you, but what comes out of you that defiles you. Yes. So many times we don't know what you're thinking until you blurt out in your mouth, uh -huh. with your mouth, what you got on your mind. Yes. Sometimes if you'll just keep your mouth shut, things will be a little bit better. All right, Sometimes if you wouldn't learn how to fly off the handle, oh, yes. we've got to have some temperance yes. every now and then. We've got to have some kindness, yes. some love. We've yes. got to have some long suffering. Yes. But we 
certainly got to have a person that's going to be temporary. Yes, all right. Those only make sure work for their souls. And you got some temperance. I'm not saying, saying I've got the only temperance. You got some temperance too. You got these things. If you got the Spirit of the Lord, you can tell these things you, you, you are, have inside of you. You have some long suffering. You, you've been dealing with some stuff. You learn how to endure. You learn how to, to be steadfast and unmovable. You learn how to be like a tree that's planted by the still waters. You learn how to put your foot in the ground and stay there. You don't jump because you get mad. You don't leave because everything is not going your way. But you learn how to stick with it. You learn how to stay with it. But I need a safe house. You need a safe house. You need a place where you can go and you know the Spirit of the Lord is going to protect you. So then, those only make sure work for their souls in eternity and take the course that will profit in a trying time. Who think, speak, and act according to the words of Christ? Who is the rock of ages and the other foundation can no man lay? God, uh, you can't lay a, 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 a foundation like God can lay. Amen. You can't lay a foundation like God can. Yes. You can't build a house unless you've got God's help. Yes. You can't build a sturdy house. We've got the three little pigs. All right. One, they were running after, uh, you know the story about the three little pigs. How they built their house, one with straw, uh -huh. one with brick, and the other with uh, sticks. sticks. Yes. Every time the wolf would come, he would huff and puff right. and blow their houses down. Right. One of those little pigs had some sticks. Right. He knew that he needed to make his house sturdy. That's what we're talking about, a safe, yes. sturdy house. Yes. Yes. In death, and you build this safe house by yes. worshiping God, by yes. acknowledging Him, by staying in His presence, yes. by knowing that He's got you under control. Yes. If my son feels like I got him under control, then I'm not going to let him down and not have him under control. Amen. If you tell the Lord, I know you got me covered, yeah. he's going to cover you. Yeah. If you have faith in the Lord, knowing that he will cover you. Yeah. Thank you, God. Now I'm coming on pretty fast here. But we come. In these verses, really, to the final verses of this chapter, mm -hmm. really, the conclusion of the sermon of our Lord, yeah. the sermon on the mount is what I'm speaking of. All right. yeah. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation upon the rock. Uh -huh. And when a flood rose, the torrent burst against that yeah. house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Yeah. How built is your house? Okay. How well is it built? Okay. My house is built on nothing less than Jesus, you know the song, blood and righteousness. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like the man who built a house upon the good without any foundation and the turret. You know, this is a scripture that kind of talks about the good and the bad. One, the you know, one uses sense and the other one didn't really. Amen. You got to learn how to use your sense nowadays. You got to learn how to build and build something that's going to last. You don't want something, you know, when you go to get those shoes, you want, you want some good shoes. So when you got some good purses, you want the best. So when you got some good necklaces, so when you got some good suits, you want a certain kind of suit. You want a certain brand of suit. You feel like you ain't gonna, uh, the suit ain't gonna last unless it's a three-piece. It ain't gonna last unless it's a uh, Giorgio Maya, unless it's something from KMG or something from uh, Dillard's. It ain't gonna be great unless you put on the the, the, uh, the, the top of the line things. You know how you, you, you shop around. But when it comes to your soul, you just take anything. You praise and have and, and, and when, when, when there is a praise in the house, you're ready to go straight to the shouting, but you don't want to praise him. You don't want to, you want to rush the praise, and then you want to get to the shouting and run and dance 
worship, but you don't want to spend no time praising Him and worshiping the Lord. We got to learn how to worship Him. Every knee is going to bow. Bow. So then, I almost finished because uh, just just by the service uh, alone, yes. I wasn't looking at you to see if you gonna praise him. Right. But I knew some people wasn't praising him, right. and it wasn't bothering me. All right. I came to lift him up this morning. Yeah. I thought about uh, because when I was reading the scripture, when you read the scriptures before it, it talks about the twelve disciples. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, did we have 12 yesterday? Mm -hmm. I was, that's what I was thinking. Right. Now everybody wasn't notified. We just decided to, because we didn't know what the circumstances were. Right. We didn't know how big the building was. We didn't want to go in and just bombard and not know what's going on. Right. So I was just kind of just, you know how you do things. You kind of do your mathematical and you kind of think, Lord, were you with us? Uh -huh. uh, was this a success? Yeah. Was it great? Yeah. We want your approval. We don't want to just be doing something just because of every other church is doing it. But we want the Lord's approval on what we do. If you get the Lord's approval on the things that you do, you don't have to worry about nothing else. You don't have to worry about people talking about you. Because one, they're going to talk about you whether you do it or not. Secondly, they're going to talk about it when you do it.
safe house. Love is in the safe house. Yes. Joy is in the safe house. Peace is in the safe house. Long suffering is in the safe house. Yes. Gentleness is in the safe house. Goodness is in the safe house. Faith is in the good is in the safe house. Meekness is in the safe house. Yes. And then temperance is in the safe house. Yes. Safety. You have no more chains binding you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. I'm just about finished. There ain't nothing deep today. It's just a simple word from the Lord. There is safety in the safe house. There is safety in the arms of Jesus. He's a good foundation.
and I didn't turn over there and yell at him. When he said that, it resonated in my mind. My goodness. And I let it resonate. She know I can hear real good. But I let it run. I said, thank you, son, for yeah. loving daddy yeah. just the way he is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you because you, I told him, I said, thank you because you know how to talk to your father. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say it in a disrespectful right. way. Right. Sometimes we blow off at our children because they say something and we think, you talking to your dad? Yeah. Right. You talking to your mom like that? And it's, they didn't even come to you in that type of manner. They came to you in love and trying to help you. You understand something. And you just go on like, I'm the father, I'm the mother. I'm in charge. I keep on telling you, and I'll try to breathe. I remember that every time I preach, I don't want to be in charge of y'all. I already know y'all hard headed. Pastor already told me. Y'all hard headed. I've seen the things that he had to go through.
enjoy the word, Pastor Draper. Talking about the safe house. And you said you had counted nine. I, I was counting twelve. I had asked some people in there. And the reason I said it's twelve, twelve of those mother bombs. Deacon Bonham. And uh, then we had some other fathers who came in. That was Elsie Davis and Ruth, uh, Ruth Gibson. So I think they made 12. But that man Dave was uh, honored to, uh, for us to be there on yesterday, and I was very happy. Amen. Because yeah. one day we're going to get over to y'all. We're going to get over to. Amen. Those people with a good spirit on yesterday. Amen. Very alert. Amen. Mana, he just made me, you know, just think real hard. He will remember something back in 1944. Yeah, right, yeah. And he's 99 years old, amen. Amen. I hope I still be in a good spirit like Mother Jones over there. 